Prime Minister Stewart says he has evidence of a breach in Mia Motley's constituency at the last election. That's our top story in our Barbados Today Morning News update for Tuesday, March the 13th. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Prime Minister Frendel Stewart, who is also the minister in charge of the Electoral and Boundaries Commission, now says he has evidence that at least one voter in St. Michael Northeast acted in breach of this country's election rules in the last general election. However, Stewart is questioning why the female voter saw the need to take a photograph of her ballot to show to opposition leader Mayor Motley after she had voted for the St. Michael Northeast incumbent. The revelation comes exactly five years after Stewart had promised to investigate worrying claims of vote buying in the last election. I have a copy of the report which the police wrote and I have a copy of the report which the presiding people at the people who presided at the polling station wrote. And both reports say basically the same thing. The constituency in which this happened was the constituency of St. Michael Northeast. And this is no figment of my imagination. This is no fake news. I have in writing the report, the two reports to which I just referred. And the young lady gave the police a statement according to the signed report of the police. And she said, I voted for Miss Motley. And I took a photograph of the ballot to show her. In other news now, the senior police officer who caused a major stir across the country during the past week following his controversial statement on the use of cell phones while driving has been removed from his position as head of traffic department. Ronald Stanford has been transferred to the Southern Division as the assistant superintendent with offices at Oystens Police Station. ASB Stanford drew widespread public criticism, including a rejection of its interpretation of the new Road Traffic Act by Minister of Transport and Works Michael Lashley after Stanford told a press conference that drivers would have to get out of their vehicles to use their cell phones in order to avoid prosecution. But at a press conference later, Lashley told reporters this was not true, encouraging motorists instead to pull off the road and use their cell phones. While the Royal Barbados Police Force has not made it official, reports state that ASP Dale Stevens is the new man in charge of the traffic department. But it is official that Public Relations Officer Inspector Roland Cobbler, who was at the same press conference, has also been relieved of his post. He has been succeeded by Inspector in the Traffic Department, Rodney Innes, effective yesterday. However, Ennis told Barbados today, yesterday afternoon, that Cobbler remains in the Community Relations Department. A 29-year-old man who tried to pawn off a generator belonging to Williams Equipment Limited is expected to know his fate in six weeks' time. Charlie Leon Hayward of Melrose St. Thomas pleaded guilty before Magistrate Douglas Frederick yesterday to stealing the 6,500 pieces of equipment sometime between March 4 and 10. The company had rented the generator to Hayward's sister during the 2016 crop over season, but it was never returned. On March 10, a pawn shop contacted Williams Equipment, informing them that a man was in their store trying to sell the generator, of which the company is the sole agent. A pre-sentencing report was ordered on his life in preparation for sentencing. Hayward was ordered to return before the District A Magistrate Court on May the 18th after he secured a $2,500 bail. There's regional and international news after this short break.
Barbados Today, news you can trust. Welcome back with news from the region now, the top story. The people of Grenada are heading to the polls today to elect a new government for the next five years. A total of 45 candidates have been nominated to contest the 2018 general election. Both the incumbent new National Party of outgoing Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell and the opposition National Democratic Congress of Nazim Burke are presenting full slates of candidates in the 15-member House of Assembly. The other candidates are from seven minority parties and there are two independent candidates. In more regional news, Antigua and Barbados Attorney General Fitzroy Benjamin is boasting that the crime rate in his country is among the lowest in the entire hemisphere. He says while the crime rate spirals in countries like Jamaica, Trinidad and St. Kitts, the security forces in his country have employed strategies to keep it under control. There is absolutely no doubt at all, my friend, that Antigua and Barbuda has the lowest crime rate in this part of the hemisphere. We're talking from Jamaica right down to Guyana. I attended recently a seminar sponsored by the security forces, and it was clear from the figures produced that in terms of serious crimes, Antigua has the lowest crime rate in the entire region. Jamaica, of course, was right up there, together with Trinidad, the Bahamas, St. Kitts Davis, you name it. But Antigua has the lowest crime rate for serious crimes in this part of the hemisphere. Not only that, too, but I think we ought to properly commend our police force and the men in armed forces for the tremendous job that they have done. And on the international scene, the adult film actress who claims she had an affair with Donald Trump before he became U.S. president offered on Monday to return $130,000 that Trump's personal lawyer paid her in what she said was hush money to remain silent about the alleged relationship. We pick up the story in this report from Reuters. Stormy Daniels is ready to repay Donald Trump's so-called hush money if she's allowed to speak openly about their alleged sexual affair. On Monday, the adult film star's lawyer sent a letter to Trump's personal attorney, offering to wire $130,000 to the president if, in exchange, all parties agreed to terminate a deal in which Daniels agreed not to discuss the relationship. The offer expires Tuesday, and it puts the president and his lawyer, Michael Cohen, in a difficult spot. The White House has consistently denied reports that Trump had a consensual, sexual, and extramarital relationship with Daniels in 2006. The president has addressed these directly and um, made very well clear that uh, none of these allegations are true. Uh, this case has already been, been won in arbitration, and anything beyond that, I would refer you to the president's out outside counsel. But with those comments, the White House appeared to confirm that the president was party to a non-disparagement agreement arranged in the last days of the 2016 presidential race. That NDA barred Daniels from speaking about an alleged affair with Trump. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbedistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.